In this video, we want to show the PS830 Fit Bolted Metal Pump. So this is an aluminum pump fitted with Viton diaphragms, Viton valve balls, stainless steel seats with Teflon O-rings. So let's go ahead and uh, tear this down and see. Uh, we're going to tear it all the way down, change out the air distribution system uh, kit, and change out also the uh, wet kit. One thing to note, Single socket assembly and disassembly. So the same socket I use for the manifold and the same socket I use for the liquid changer. So no need to change over. So let's go ahead and start changing these up. Now you'll notice the valve balls, valve seats, are stuck inside the manifold right you want to get out that O-ring and remove it. There's the O-ring, there's the valve seat, there's the valve ball. Stainless steel seat, PTFE O-ring, and a light on valve ball. What you want to do is inspect the valve ball, look at it against the seat, make sure you don't see any light coming through around that valve ball. We'll do the same thing on the other manifold. So in the wet kit, you'll notice it'll come with two new, uh, four new valve balls. It'll come with the valve seat O-rings, and it'll come with primary diaphragms. And if you have the Teflon, it'll come with primary and back. So once we got that manifold off, let's go ahead and take off the inlet manifold. You notice movement has flats, so when you turn it over, it's not moving all around. You get easy access to the bottom. Same thing here. We've got the valve seat, the valve ball, and the manifold O-ring. We just use the O-ring pick, get underneath there. Next, we get to the liquid chambers. So, liquid chambers can be installed either direction. We like to try to remember the orientation. So, the liquid chamber has an arrow that shows the flow direction. So, you notice the flow arrow, and on the metal pumps, opposite of the plastic, you notice that that quarter inch port is here. So, this port is the top, should point to the same direction as the arrow flow going that way. So, another good feature that we have, we have flats machined in the liquid chamber. So, when I lay it on the side, it's not rolling over. So, you can easily work on it without the pump rolling off the table. I like to try to leave all the fasteners in place so when you put it back together, you know where all the fasteners were. As you can see, the liquid chamber fasteners are about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch longer. So when you go to put them back together, if you have the wrong ones, it's real easy to make a, make a mistake. So I keep the long ones with the liquid chamber so they don't get, so they don't get uh, mixed up. Now we want to take off that outer piston assembly. So, what we'll do is lay it on the side, and we want to be able to remove this. So, using a one inch socket, using our torque wrench, like me. Once you saw that it moves, you can go ahead and take off the liquid chamber. Again, single socket assembly. I haven't had to change the socket. I use the same socket for the manifolds and the liquid chamber. Now, Wilson uses on the metal pumps what we call a fixed fastener, meaning that 
The liquid chambers are threaded. The air chambers are threaded. This way you don't have to worry about a nut and a washer on the back side. So once we get that chamber off, we'll put that off to the side. Now that exposes our diaphragm. As you can see, these primary diaphragms are pie-shaped, traditional line top. But once we get that off, we can go ahead and start taking off the diaphragm assembly. So the outer piston, the primary diaphragm, the inner piston, and the diaphragm assembly. That's the same thing on the opposite side. So next we can get into and start changing out our air distribution system. All right, so what we want to do first is take off the air valve. So to do that, let's go ahead and use the 3 sixteenths. Take off the six bolts so we can remove our air valve assembly. The air valve assembly consists of the buffer plate. We'll then also use this thick air valve and buffer plate isolator gaskets made of a quarter inch thick rubber. So not little spaghetti string gaskets, very thick gaskets that are reusable if you need to. And then we have the air valve. So the air valve to access it, pretty simple. You remove the end cap use one of the bolts from the muffler plate, run that back through the end cap, and run that into the large end of the air valve. You'll notice there is a quarter 20 thread there. We'll go ahead and screw that right in. Using that as a tool, we can pull that out and inspect it. All we're doing is looking at the seals, make sure the seals are good, make sure the seals are intact, make sure that everything is properly looped, a good note on this too, if that air valve will hold up the weight of that air valve body, that air valve spool is still pretty good. You can reuse it. If it doesn't, and if that air valve body just falls right off, let's say the whole, the whole thing was in there but it just fell off, that means the spool is in need of replacing. Some stuff that's going to come in the new air kit is going to be these items here. You're going to get a new, you're going to get a new air valve isolator gasket. You're going to get a new muffler plate isolator gasket. You're going to get a new air valve spool. You'll get new, a uh, few other internal components. So we'll get to that next. To get to that, we'll have to replace these quarter-inch Allen bolts, and we'll have to remove that snap ring. That takes care of the Allen bolts. Using our snap ring pliers, we'll take out the snap ring. Snap ring is off. That's going to also be a fit. We'll take out our four acorn bolts. That'll connect its access to remove the air chamber. We're going to remove that air chamber gasket. Right? That's going to expose your pilot spool assembly here. So we can take our pilot spool assembly, using the deep set socket, just push that through. Also, the control spool, you want to remove that. So using an O-ring pick, we'll take off that, that. So we've got that off, we can also push that through. We'll push that through. We remove that pilot spool assembly. A new one comes in the kit. Then we take off these air chamber bolts. And once we get those four bolts out, that will give us access to the other bolts. We remove this gasket. We have these four bolts. That leaves us with just the center block by itself. We're going to want to change out these light rings and these bushings. So using our O-ring pick, 
remove those bushings, remove that glide ring, and from inside the control spool, there's also another O-ring in there as well. So we'll take that, flip it over, and do the same thing. Bushing, glide ring, control spool seal. So the control spool seal came out of this screw, the glide ring came out of this screw, the bushing drops in here, the pilot spool goes in there. So this is the air control kit that's going to uh, be used to replace all the components we took out. So your pilot spool there, your pilot spool here, both your gaskets are going to be here, these two seals are going to be here, the retaining o-rings are going to be the smaller ones, the glide rings are going to be here, and this control spool here, and then these other ones underneath it are going to be your end cap o-rings. <laughs>